Boom, boom, boom. No yelling, Dana. I was listening to that part. Because I figured it was so distorted from last night. I'm ashamed of myself. Not. Not at all. Hello, everybody. That was a little bit loud. That'll teach you to have your speakers up so high. Don't do that no more, will ya? Then especially when Dan's leaning ahead to start the show and make it really loud. And... Hi Zoe, I hear you. Can you believe the news that's coming out of Japan? Not that you need that news anymore. Not that anybody needs news anymore. Because everything is good there. You can see the picture I got. That proves it. Right? I mean, yeah, come on. I mean, we know... We know um, it looks like that on the inside. And they can't get at that for at least, uh, actually, in reality, probably a couple thousand years. So we're doing our walk. Around. But let's just pretend it looks like that. Because it does. It's a Kevlar tarp they put over it. Made it look like a box. Kind of rectangle. Does it make you feel any better? Feel secure? Chernobyl got it... Uh, Half a mile or what? Not that much, but it's got so much cement poured on it. And then you look at that, and that's 100% meltdown. Chernobyl's only 30% meltdown. Chernobyl was one third size reactor as Fukushima. And so then, why did he put all that cement over Fukushima and a million people run in there to do that job so they can do that? And then you got 100% on it, three times bigger, not counting the fuel pools that are missing, that went off like firecrackers. Let's look at that picture. Let's look at that picture. Because I know there's a little delay when I click on picture, so I repeat myself for a change. That's for when I look at it after to see where they snatch chunks of my videos when I re-upload it. Pretty sneaky. Sneaky bunch out there. To determine to censor us, to determine to get into the comment sections and put a whole bunch of conjectures in there. If not now, after the video goes up, they're going to be in there. I got 800 and something videos and as a moderator, that's something I got to do. Because I put a lot of time, energy and effort into my work and then they get some PR firm or lobbyist firm, which are one and the same. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. And they'll come in and try to muddle the water. <laughs> if they can't just come in and insult you and call you names. Because you can't debate anything you're saying. So the best thing is to come in and talk about planets that are going to come in. Or talk about remote viewing. Let's remote view things. Okay, I could do that. I, I could do this. I could do this. Remote view. I'm going to remote view. Hang on. Quiet, Zoe. Stop scratching. What? You weren't scratching? Well, I was remote viewing. You're going to scratch. Stop it. Before you start it. Okay, hang on. I'm, this is not a joke, by the way. I'm serious. And I put on my... Where's my tinfoil? No, I don't need tinfoil because that's conspiracy. And tinfoil... We all know tinfoil helps on your head. Especially if you're going to do some remote viewing. So let's remote view... Um, oh, wait, wait. Pacific Ocean should be dead. They're talking about it. I'm looking into a room. There's a bunch of guys standing around. They got little caps on their heads. Little yellow caps. And, oh, wait now. I can hang on. Be quiet. I, I can't hear what they're saying. Huh? Oh, my goodness. They're saying when the Pacific Ocean is dead, they're going to kill not only the Indian Ocean, but also the South Pacific Ocean at the same time. <laughs> I love remote viewing. There you go. Pack it all in. Let's go hang them from a street pole. I remote viewed it. We don't need we don't need pictures anymore. We don't need <laughs> information anymore. Why bother with pictures and information like that when you can just remote view? Do people actually fall for that? Yes, they do. Otherwise, the PR firms will be out there spreading it all the time. And, oh, wait, now I got another remote view coming in. There's a comet going to come and they're going to knock out all the power. 
so we don't have to worry about the ocean no more because the power is going to be out that's more important oh wait now no more remote feeling there's something else coming in into my head here planet x w y p i is gonna get a little boost from a ufo engine they're gonna nudge up against that big planet x and they're gonna shove it over and it's gonna come down and it's gonna graze earth Forget about Fukushima, I worry about Planet X. Forget about Fukushima, worry about Lady Gaga, her ratings are falling. And the list goes on and on and on. And I, so I get a lot of that. You have no idea because I'm the moderator on the site here. So it's just, it's just endless a cascade coming at me of that stuff. And it's like, uh, click, you're gone. Uh, click, you're gone. Uh, click, you're gone too. To the point where I'm numb at this stage of it. I'm just numb. It's just like click. Uh, fucking Planet X. That, you know. It, it seems inconceivable that there's people out there getting paid to spam that stuff. And murder people by using that as a distraction. Or it's just robots probably a lot of the times. Uh, but when you come into the debates and conversations, uh, don't don't be surprised if that's not artificial uh, software too. Because it'll be hard for a murderer to come into my stream without me thumping on them before they get away from me. Without me uh, bruising their ideology that they got a decent job. Not that they go home and tell their mothers or their parents or their wives how they're out there wrecking the planet by lying. And we got the Japanese down there, they'll just shove a rag in your mouth. The hell with it, we'll just shove a rag in their mouth and drag them out of the building. That's what we'll do, right? We can't control what's going on, let's just drag them out of the building. Yeah, and like, I, like you might not think it, but I learned on YouTube how to remote view. I don't think you folks get it. I'm p -p pro! P -p 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 chicken pro! You know, more remote viewing, people are laughing at me. <laughs> All over the world. Who knows, maybe somebody took me serious. I was joking! Seriously. I wasn't remote viewing, okay? I was when I was, Zoe was going to scratch. Maybe that was an instinct. Uh, let me say a few things. I'm going to come over to the convers conversation section here. And Gutterson, they want to dump all of Fukushima's radioactive water in the Pacific. Because they understand that it's just a big joke and what's the big deal? That's what they're doing all the time anyway. That was just a show and tell, right? Bunch of tanks, looks pretty, now they're running out of room. So, and the tanks are going to fall apart. And to control the release now, at least... They got no choice. You know, they want to open up a nuclear power plant and get power going there, and we shouldn't say no. Because if we don't give them power, this could get a whole lot worse. And and we give them power and they have an earthquake, this could get a lot worse. It's a double-edged sword. And there's a lunatic got it in his hands. And it's called Mother Nature, where they get thousands of earthquakes every year. It's, it's just so insane that our Pacific Ocean is dead by, you know, even if we stopped it now, it's dead. It's dead. And so we got to, we can't trust media. We can't trust our governments anymore. They've all stabbed us in the back and turned their back on us. And at this rate, order will break down. And so we, as a society, we got to deal with what's coming at us hardcore. That's the meteorite coming at us. It's called Fukushima. It already smacked into us. And no, nobody, everybody's in a daze. Everybody's walking around in a dream state. Uh, but everybody's capable of doing the right and ethical thing if given the opportunity to know. And if they find out from mainstream media with a sad song and tears in their eyes, that ain't going to help anything. That's going to be pandemonium. 
No one's going to pay bills. No one's going to pay their mortgages. No one's going to pay this. Everybody's going to be jacking everybody else's stuff. If we don't have a strong narrative. So I goof around a little bit and I probably shouldn't do that because each one, each of these shows are very important because the people we are trying to educate us ourselves as a collective, because that's how I'm educated as a collective from everybody. I get every narrative imaginable, and particularly the ones I don't like, particularly the ones that go against everything that I know. And so I combine all that and try to figure out how to work with that. <laughs> and that's not right that the collective, like the people underneath my video is an incredible example, every one of them have been here much, much longer than I have and have been doing everything and and have succeeded dramatically, incredibly, inconceivably well and continue to every single day with dedication and inspirations that we can't fathom is that the inspiration is that if there's going to be any hope, somebody has to to push and push and push and push and hopefully wake up and inform people uh, gently and realistically and empower them with knowledge that will make them be a voice of reason wherever they are too. And so sometimes I miss my mark because I can be a bit of a dick sometimes, but generally we're really good as the collective, the comment section and everything else, everybody's, everybody has a purpose, a very, very important purpose now to become, and like the regular viewers are very knowledgeable. They can all run their own shows at this stage comfortably. And they probably will in the very near future as we grow louder and more boisterous and as we take over the chat rooms with our knowledge and as we take over the radio shows with our knowledge, as we take over with our knowledge, Facebooks and Twitters and everything else, as we see it, we hammer back with reality, with undeniable, straightforward. We don't, we don't come out about remote viewing. There's no need to. We don't come out about meteorites or comets, or other planets, because there's no need to, only in the context of, that's what this is, it's, it's going to slam into us hard, and the fun is over, period, for everybody. And the struggle begins, of how much of this planet can we, sa can we save, and we have the opportunities that are just, no civilization before has had the opportunity or created the misery, certainly, but has this one unique opportunity where there's an event that as a collective we could do something really cool and change the tide and change the entire structure and get rid of the old world and bring in a new world of rationality without this occult, this hidden away uh, entity that has been trying to control mankind and has successfully for thousands of years, what's known as the blue blood. And even though this is such an event, they will still try their best to control whatever remains and most likely will succeed. Except for this time, when there's such a, a mass killings and kill-offs, is we have a population that just is motivated, I think is the better way to put it. And because they're motivated by knowledge, by their understandings, but hopefully as a collective understandings where everybody has to listen to both sides, particularly the ones you don't like, and you can't just listen to it once. It's the same as the good stuff. you got to listen to it many times to really appreciate it. There's no lecture out there that's not worth six times listening to if it's a good lecture. And every time you're going to hear stuff you just never heard the time before or the time before that. That's what knowledge is. It's, it's so encompassing, it takes your brain and just makes you slip away for a moment. And you can miss so much because that had resonated with you so well. And the fact that there's three melted reactors and one of them have MOX fuel, I'm going to come to the comment section right away. But the fact that there's three melted reactor, reactors 
and Chernobyl was one third the size of either of them. But MOX fuel in number three reactor in Japan was two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. And then we got to hundreds of tons in each, above the roof of each of these buildings that are missing, that went off like firecrackers, and then were atomized. And so we have to stop playing this game now, because uh, losing the Pacific, all those species in the Pacific Ocean, you know, no, there's no way to explain that one. There's no way, you can't look back on this one and say, well, we tried our best, but we didn't win. We look back on it and say, we've done pretty good, because that's what we're going to be doing. We're not a defeatist society. That's what they want you to believe. That's what they want you to think. But the minute you try to empower yourself and lift yourself up above it, they lost that control. The minute you rose up and decided you're going to make some kind of a difference, by doing the right thing and learning properly and understanding the actual scenario itself without taking their words for it by sourcing that yourself, you denied them the ability to ever have that upper hand on you ever again. And you empower your friends and your families and your loved ones every time that you get that knowledge. And I know there's probably, I don't know how many videos I've made now in a row, but the majority of them can do that for you and then you'll find all the links below my video and those are those are the type of people that will 100 percent do the exact same thing for you and that is necessary because you have to hear it from all sides they cover completely different than i do everybody below me and that's why i like them so much is because they do it totally different than each other and so that gives you this opportunity truly to see the different sides that are not visible so easily unless you've got a long history of flushing out these types of uh, subjects. Uh, and I like it too, whether you like it or not, you have to get the CNN, the Fox News, the BBC, the, the academic journals and everything else. And then you have to read every and watch everything and listen to everything and source everything in order to actually truly have an opinion. And so most people can't do that. But this is not hard to do right now. Um, so let's come over to the conversation second section, blah, blah, blah. And that was a nice short rant, 17 minutes. If I didn't take a deep breath, I probably would have went for another 17 minutes. Hi, Nubro Magic. Oh, hey, boo. I was trying to, I was going to use your uh, screen capture, your tattoo tonight from my cover story. But because of the subject and the headlines, I was like, uh, I need something a little bit more morbid tonight. Not that your tattoo is morbid. Probably the wrong word. Uh, but anyway, next time. Because I like it. It's a good picture. I just want to make sure it comes out good in the cover. Otherwise, it, you know, because that's the right way to do it for me anyway. Hi, country, cowpunk, Mr. Jim. Breadbasket, I got no idea. Oceans can mix. Also, shipping can carry on the holes, radioactive crap. That's right. And they will, and they do. Uh, and Nuber Magic again, you know, and I don't mention enough to rain. And Radchick uh, had made a point there a few videos back about how snow has more points. And so it picks up more radiation. Man, you got to like that lady, I'll tell you what. And link below to her site. Please subscribe to her. She keeps herself in the public all the time. She's out there all the time. She's uh, authoritative and educated. It's so it's so important. Thank you, Camshaft. Thank you, Elizabeth. All oceans are affected just because of all uh, the radiation on the planet anyway. That you know, for the last fifty years, all the releases, all the atomic testing, and that's different than what we're talking about. Those types of isotopes. And once again, you know, bananas and potatoes and background radiation like water and airplanes have no part of this conversation ever. They can't kill you. Any of these radiations we're talking about, weaponized isotopes and the gammas, the betas, the alphas, the x-ray for in Japan itself, uh, that might be coming over on debris, which is the big pieces, and they're putting off the Rankins, extraordinary powerful ones. Uh, we'll go down that road in a little bit. <coughs> Hi, Starlight. Hi, Annie Beck. Is there any way of cleaning nukes from the water? 
Well, no. They, like you can clean, you might be able to clean out a couple of isotopes. And then the equipment you got, you can never get near it the minute you start doing that because you're picking up all these isotopes. So you can never go in there and calibrate anything. You can never go in and retrieve anything. You can never go in and repair anything. That equipment is lost till the end of time the minute you start doing it. See, that's what a lot of people can't wrap their mind around. Is once you start using that equipment, it's not like you can just wash it off, you know? Like you take a bucket of water or take some special ointment and stick on it and... <laughs> Deactivate, it doesn't work, period. You just can't do that, see? But a lot of people want to live in that fantasy land, unfortunately, not saying you do, but... Uh, let me keep going. Thank you, Elizabeth. You're very kind. Hi, Sergeant York. York. Sue me. The currents and upcoming horrors, because I can't get your name right, you can if you want to. I'll, I'll meet you in court. I won't fight you. I just want to say hi. That's all. Where are the, uh, those brilliant minds now? They're being paid to shut their yaps with the hope that maybe they'll be put in a bunker when we all go looking for them down in the very near future. I miss Milky the Clown. I slow her down the way for you. It just goes from point A to point B. Not invisible or harmless, right? Uh, checks and balance, we received two inches of big snowflakes. You almost want to catch one with your tongue. How sad is it that we even have to talk like this? My goodness. Yeah. Hang on. Let me come up and say hi to a few people. Whoever said hi that time, your name is too big and I can't see it because my screen is too crappy. Hang on. No, that didn't help. I made the screen bigger. Well, next person comments. I'll get your comment. I'll come down. Hi, Kerry B. I just got your message for before I came online. Sorry. I would have done that for you. Ketzer K. This is what I thought, but every so often I hear about the ocean not mixing due to temperatures. Well, the oceans mixes, yes, but they don't as mix as bad as I feared originally. And I feared that the oceans is just poured right into each other. But if you go look up the charts of the actual ocean currents from peer review studies, so you can kind of trust it a little bit because it's been peer reviewed by other institutions, you find out that it doesn't mix quite as readily. Yes, it does, certainly. All oceans do mix together. And then the rainstorms will pick up thousands of miles of ocean surface and bring it. But the stratosphere is also, I'm burping again as I'm talking, because I just ate supper too fast. But the ocean uh, trop troposphere is bringing, and the stratosphere is bringing ocean right around this planet all the time. And that's, um, that's been full of all kinds of isotopes for many, many years. But the isotopes that we're so uh, frightened of at this particular time are the, are the strontium they don't check for and they can't. The cesiums, different types of cesiums besides the typical, the 137 they always want to ball about and the radioiodine with the 8-day eight, eight half-life. That's assholes, uh, seriously, that say stuff like that. We're worried about 1,300 weaponized isotopes. That's why MOX fuel is 2 million times different. They try to tell you it's only plutonium and, and uh, uranium, which is enriched uranium, by the way, which is totally different monster again. And, but it's not. It's just, and then they tell you that MOX fuel is for uh, power. And you can't, you can't use a MOX fuel reactor for power. It doesn't work that way. The other reactor 1 and 2 maybe were for power, or 5 and 6. Well, five and six was probably for the MOX fuel reactor to run the lasers to enrich the MOX fuel. Because that's, that's an enrichment facility is what they got there. But it's a weaponized military industrial complex, and they knew that if something went wrong, it would happen to the Japanese, not the American people, and they could uh, continue on with their nuclear research. But this has backfired. Um, and, you know, there was a lot of speculations that this could have been done on purpose, but with the 5,000 earthquakes averaging a year down there, it was bound to happen anyway. 
And you're just going down a rabbit hole that doesn't even matter anymore. You're trying to survive on this planet, going after uh, the illusion that there might be something at the end of that rainbow is an enormous amount of resources are going to get wasted. And people will do that, and they might get lucky, and there might be something there, I don't know. But it's like chasing a comet, as far as I'm concerned. It's like chasing the paperwork right now, as far as I'm concerned. you got to watch out. Uh, chasing and, and just trying to point fingers at this is a waste of time. It's a waste of time. The only finger we should be pointing is the fact that Japan has a secrecy law, so we can't find out how much deadlier it is every other day, and that we have to uh, take over that country, Japan itself, because they can't take over their own country. They tried, and they got rags shoved in their mouth and hauled away, and nobody knows what happened to them. And we cannot sustain what's going on here much longer. And so our voices has to become tens of thousands. That's, you know, and then hundreds of thousands and then millions in a short period of time that are educated and informed. And so that's why I'm trying to stay on track. Sometimes I get a little goofy when I'm starting out. So, you know, but you gotta, we got to stay on track and put out knowledge just consistently. That's what I'm intending to be doing. And I'm starting to get more focused on what my job here is, is that I got to continue to get, you know, I'm at it all day to day and just can't cover much. Are Unified and Six shut down? Well, there was reports that there was fire and smoke at those buildings on October 25th when they had that 7.3 earthquake and when the internet went bone dry out of Japan at the same time and never came back online. There was one one thousandth of one percent of the Japanese population at best is online, they're probably seated PR companies outside, otherwise they would have to let this filter, other stuff could filter out too. And they just can't take that chance because there's something going on there. There's stories there, they know, they feed us some of the stories of the horror, but that's fed to us on all the media at the one time. So that's, that's suspect, say, why they're doing stuff like that. And they're trying to, and they always uh, incite it with the the cesium one thirty seven. Never mention the uranium with a billion year la uh, half life, a couple of billion year half life, or the plutonium, which a couple of pounds up and kill almost all the mammals on the planet, and that's after it killed all the humans. And there's hundreds of thousands of tons of that, and that the weaponized facility has three melted reactors. Chernobyl only had one. Uh, at 30 percent and it's one third the size of the smallest reactor at Fukushima and so we don't need any kind of evidence anymore we already got proof that those reactors are melted and missing and that the Japanese uh, the system itself because the Japanese government owned 50 percent uh, you know of the shears of TEPCO for a long time and so by proxy now Japan has the biggest itself has the biggest voting shares in that weaponized industrial mil military complex that's uh, hid away under the disguise that it's uh, Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. It's actually a weaponized uh, military industrial complex. Period. And the earthquake itself and the, the the ensuing tsunami, there was about a 50 foot wave flooded that place, and so there was contaminants spread immediately, long before they blew their tops. You know. 20 something hours, 22 hours later was the first uh, one. And then the next day, around the same amount of time, and then the next day, another, and the third reactor. And then the fuel pools in building four had, there was a detonation, but then the fuel pools rather caught fire after because the earthquake apparently broke their backs of the pools and they can't retain water in the pools. And so they have to flood these perpetually till the end of time. And the reactors that are missing. We know, because you can see yourself, they went off like a firecracker, and that was a nuclear, a hot nuclear running reactor at the time, and it doesn't exist anymore. And it aerosoled hundreds of thousands of tonnage of extraordinarily toxic, inconceivably on the nanoscale, uh, hideously dangerous to every life form on the planet has been released into our environment. And because, like I've said repeatedly and a lot lately in the last number of uh, videos, is that we have 4,200 peer-reviewed academic studies published every day that are locked away. 
and that's uh, 1.6 billion man hours a year are children in institutions that we paid for and we fund all the equipment, all the heat, all the lights, all the professors. And that's all locked away by also for Springer and Wiley. Most of it is locked up in their ivory towers. They get the copyrights for free. And as a society, the only hope we got is if we end that immediately and we flip all the institutions over to go to work on Fukushima. And because it's not a big meteorite coming at us, hey, right? people uh, don't understand that. And that's what I'm saying. If it was a big meteorite coming at us, and that's how we have to treat this, then everybody on the planet would go to work to deal with that. We will come together as a, as a collective worldwide and deal with this because we have no options. And that's what's happening to us. And everybody else that are playing the games in the media, that like CNN has lost 50% of their viewers in the last 12 months because of their constant, constant loy. And we don't care about them. We can wake up the population on our own. We really, truly can. Once we stir up, you know, once we come up with a five-minute narrative that can browbeat anything on the planet into submission, and that's what we're doing, even though we keep these shows for an hour. There's lots of five-minute segments that, as a collective, we have put together that can browbeat any news, any radio show, any TV show, any mainstream media conversation uh, story in the comment sections. You can destroy those people by putting those stories there and they read them. And that's another narrative that they're not going to get into that media. But it's a solid narrative that there's three melted cores and the Pacific will be dead by six years according to that German model, which is a worldwide universal model. And so once you link them back to that, you won. That's game over. They can't live in that illusions anymore. And once you explain to people that you can't get in any, like building four, because there's so much toxins, and that they put those covers over them, they can never go inside of it because the toxins now fill up that entire room. See? That's never going to go away, ever. Because they're not going to let it. They're not going to let it get, you know, the whole world come and try. That's what we need to do. And that's what we're going to force out there. Period. Because uh, there's no argument, see, that they can win you, beat you wit. I would love to get into debate with anything out there on the planet about it. Anything on this planet about it. I will gladly um, throw down in a heartbeat. Let them have their words first and then come out and destroy them. Right. Let me go over the conversation before I give it up. Hi, Steve. My thoughts as well, Serge. Not... How long? Avoid the tuna. I want to talk to Jerry about that one. I encourage everyone to mirror. Uh, yeah, Miss Milky's videos, you know. If you're learning, that's such a great site. And that's why those links are below my video. And I got a, I posted a video a few days back about OCAM, how to use that to grab clips. But you can also just remix right to your site if, you, if you've got a bit of knowledge. But you can take these little clips and email them to your friends. Email them to your fire department and ask them, are they going to have a Fukushima evacuation drills in your community? I think that's probably the most powerful way possible to shove this out there, is everybody's got to start trying to get in their faces. And I know I went to do it, and then I never got around to doing it, and that reminds me, because um, i got 25,000 people or so here, that has to be done here. So it looks like I'm going to have to get on the radio show here, and have another kick at that can because I got so much under me built now I could uh, hopefully get this whole community to get in gear and that could try to start a little bit of a chain reaction but in a way where you know we got to face the reality of it and uh, that's pretty you know that's pretty uh, messed up it's so hard to be the bearer of such news it's such a burden for anybody I think on this planet to you know, to be the bearer of that news, and we need people that can carry it well, can can cover the bases without leaving the voids for fear, and the fear being that uh, as a society we got to come to rationality that we're going to have to move off the coastlines, and we're going to have to deal with otherwise we're going to have supercell storms coming at us, like like destroy the Philippines. And I watched a video on journeyman pictures today, and the people in the Philippines. And this is heartbreaking. 
And I see this young man, and he said, you know, we're going to have to consider going somewhere else to live. We, we can't survive another one of these. And they use it in the context of global warming. And he said, if this is what global warming is going to do, and it did, and he's sitting in a pile of rubble, and in the background is this like a seven-year-old, six-year-old girl, and she's shaking and just covered in dirt and crying and traumatized. And this was taken just after the tsunami passed through. And they're 100% correct. They can't stay there, see? They just can't stay there. Cause, and we can't stay here either, anywhere on the coastline. Because it'll be California will get flattened, or Vancouver, Canada, or every point in between. But one of these major metropolitan cities with a couple of million people are going to get... And uh, they're going to get destroyed. Because they got no common sense anyway, most of these big cities. They're totally lost outside of their homes. And so if their homes are destroyed um, by 300, 400 mile an hour winds that are coming, because we won't even try. We will not even try. We think we can hide this as a society. The media thinks this is just going to go away. And they know all the signs. But they can't say anything because they read teleprompters all day. But at some point in the very near future, right, they're going to try to control these narratives by controlling the narrative. And so that's where our narratives are so important, you know? Um... Hang on, check and see how long I've been on streaming for, folks. 36 minutes. 36 minutes. Uh, hi, Carol. Let me say hi to a few people. If you're joining us, uh, I'll spend the next couple of minutes saying hi. So if you comment now, I'll find it in about 30 seconds. I guess they got some kind of delay on me because the comments only show up about 30 seconds later. Dana, does living at the altitude give an advantage? Well, uh, those isotopes that are going into death streams, Leonard Ray uh come up with that one last night officially. So they're not jet streams no more, they're death streams above us. And they're traveling, say, at 100 miles an hour. So every 24 hours, that's 2,400 miles. And so it can cross the Pacific in three days. And because it's above the mountains, above the atmosphere, um, and the point I wanted to make was, say, no matter where you lived in your community, say your community was a big hill, and no matter where you lived in that community, if you had a nuclear fallout warning, like Jericho in the second episode, fallout, where everybody got to run and get in their houses because there's a nuclear fallout. Don't even get me started. And you want to stay out of your basement because when this isotope comes in, it'll seek out the lowest point of your home. So even if you're on top of the hill or the bottom of the hill and you've got a basement, you stay out of your basement. So anything you plan on using, get it out of your basement. Get it up high. And we find the isotopes from the Gulf War a year later in the, Al in the Swiss Alps. In the mountains and all around the world, those isotopes were found within a year of the Iraqi war, um, if you want to call it that, the Gulf War, where they used uh, almost 700 tons altogether. I know uh, Dr. Doug Rourke was saying 350 tons, but he was talking about the A-10 Warthog, because that's all it uses is, uh, is uranium-238, right? And then the weaponized 234 and 235 that's made by refining that stuff, that's what's used for, that's 2% of 100 pounds, 0.2 of 100 pounds, 0 0.02 or whatever of 100 pounds uh, is 235s and 234 uranium, and the rest of it is uh, uranium-238, and that's what is yellow cake. And Hanford has 41 miles of open pit down there of a yellow cake. 41 miles, it has 2 billion gallons dumped in the ocean. We've got 5.5 million bullets a month fired in Iraq, most of that came from McAllister's. That was dirty bombs, every single one of them. Every nuclear plant is leaching into the ocean. 
uh, rather than releasing it into the community and accidentally killing a whole bunch of people. I say that just in pun. But then you have all the dump in the ocean itself, like 45,000, 45 gallon drums off California's coastline. And that's why all the seals have got all these uh, sores and they are emaciated because of the way it attacks your system, sequesters in your body. You can't eat and digest and you can't find food anyway because it's displacing all of the indigenous species out there uh, with the pollutant itself, with the heavy metals and on top of that. And so that concoction, uh, um, after 72 hours, you'll get big open sores from that yellow cake, which is the 238 that they dump in the ocean all the time. That's the leftover, the, what we call yellow cake. And that's uh, it's got all kinds of contaminants, heavy metal contaminants in it too. Now, the, the thing to remember is it's Russia too, and then you got Sellafield, UK, 8 million liters a day going into that ocean. And then you we fired the depleted uranium on all four continents that don't have nuclear weapons. And then on the three with the nuclear weapons, they're all leaking our nuclear plants. They're all weapons. They're all like we don't need to make any more isotopes for the last forty years. We already had the isotopes we needed to make nuclear power. We didn't need to create all these other isotopes. There's there's, they have no benefit to society, and they're supposed to be in a sarcophagus till the end of time, but you can't put these in a sarcophagus. You don't know how to build one. So we shouldn't have touched this project until we had another planet and then tried the nuclear power out on another planet before we even tried it on our planet and got the kinks out there on a planet that we're never going to use, blah, blah, blah. Because that stuff, they knew it from day one, was the most idiotic thing you could ever do. And on the flip side, if you ever want to get into outer space, you got to get used to radiation. Right? Because as humans, males can't even go into space because they go blind. And women are, seem to be okay to go into space, which actually makes sense. Because the majority of the women out there are, are number one on this planet. I think they are. And the majority of the men out there are, have been bravoed, you know, indoctrinated so well that they, they, they can't think outside of their uh, peckers, right? until they're much older, and unless they're going to private schools and private institutions. And like you say, even then they have this self-regulating uh, restriction because of the family they come from. They don't have the freedom, even though they come from the wealthy family. Growing up in a wealthy family, you're kind of growing up without freedom. It's a different type of world, you know, because you always have to be guarded. And so you don't really truly know freedom even as you get older. Because free, freedom comes from not, from having freedom, from not, just not caring. And that comes a lot of the times uh, from uh, an impoverished or working man, woman type of lifestyle. And these people with the golden spoons don't have that soul or that history. And so everything is handed to them and becomes, some of them, I'm not saying all of them. Of course, you know, some of them do turn out quite, Looks like I got kicked off my stream. Check one, check two. They booted that one off. And so my counter keeps working when that happens. I'll come down and say hi because I lost track that time. I was trying to make a point. And it didn't work the way I wanted it because my screen went ready, ready. Now, see, I shouldn't lose my stream ever. I'm losing low bandwidth. I have a huge stream. I'm in Canada. I'm extraordinarily privileged to have these types of streams. And you literally got to kick my whole neighborhood off for me to lose my stream. And last couple of nights, this has happened to me. Uh, and Because I'm only using a 360, right? I've been at this for many, many years, and I know what I'm doing. And that's why I use such a small stream. Blah. Let me come down. Say hi. Oh, I don't know. I didn't get knocked off. Well, my screen did. It went red, popped up to the top, and it said, we're not receiving your stream. That's probably where they're chopping my video from when it comes back up. They want to chop shit off. Because you can tell a story and then not get the punchline. And so people are wondering what the hell you're talking about, right? And they do this. I mean, it's these subtle things that they do. 
And I'm not being paranoid or nothing because I really couldn't care less. That's why I do the things I do because I'm just going to keep doing it. But I am cautious because I know they do that. And it's very effective to do stuff like that. And they need to practice on somebody. And I don't know anybody else is out there putting their foot in the door every night. Do you? In that context. And I would rather they came in and had a real debate. Uh, but they're not going to do that to me because I'm not going to play by their rules. Oh, no. 114? What is that? I mean, new rule. Oh, um, really? Somebody must be putting us out there tonight. 118. <laughs> it's easy to do a blog when you only got 30 or 40 people because it's still hard. Nah, I'm okay. But yeah, somebody's helping throw a few people on the site tonight, which is great. Uh, that helps everybody a little bit and a lot, I guess. So let me check the time and then I'll go down. That's 46 minutes. Look, it's like this. We got a serious job on our hands and we can all be employed full time, right? No more poverty, no more unemployment, no more free handouts. We can all work trying to keep alive uh, and collect species from the Pacific Ocean before it disappears trying to mitigate any of the damage to the other oceans before they get out of control because they're already damaged. Fukushima released hundreds of thousands of tons of atomized particulates that are so toxin. Think about how the strontium, a single gram of it, when it falls down on those 9,000 degree Fahrenheit melted cores like one, two, and three. And by the way, three is a two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. So because it's a lot bigger than the one from Chernobyl. It's about 18 million times more deadly than Chernobyl's. And it's a 100% meltdown. Chernobyl was only a 30% meltdown. That's why we got those numbers. But above it was also a lot of MOX fuel, spent fuel. And it's a much bigger reactor. It's not made for power. And so there's hundreds of thousands and hundreds of thousands of tons atomized, not with a nuclear explosion, but through the most scariest process imaginable. 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, which is hotter than the temperature of the sun as the cores were melting their ways down onto the bedrock. And then now that they're down there, and the reason they're able to stay on that site is because they're down there and water is flowing over that. And so that water has to be flushed out into the ocean. And originally it was pumping a million gallons a minute around each core. And so there's 1,440 minutes in a day, that's 4.3 billion gallons a day that was necessary to keep them cool. And so if these cores, these melted coriums, what they call coriums, but are just the cores have left to containment where they were basically at best, you know, at 1800 degrees, they were ready to leave their containment unit. So imagine what 9,000 uh, 9, degree Fahrenheit temperatures is gonna do. So the, the oh shit plan was it goes down and lands on the bedrock, a river floods it out into the ocean where it there's a dispersal. not diluting but dispersal and what dispersal means is that it spreads out and creates more damage unfortunately and that because the cesium we know stays at the surface from the studies the 137 which i couldn't care less about because nobody's bothered to check out all the other family tree of the cesium and the strontium and the plutonium and the uranium and the generally the 1300 weaponized long life isotopes and Missy, Miss Milky, the clown, was saying low-level radiation is very dangerous too, by the way, folks. And, re and I was reading the comment there uh, that I missed last night. But low-level radiation is extraordinary. There's no level, safe level, period, of radiation. And if you go through the archives, you'll find out that 200 uh, CPMs, counts per minute, was put in 45-gallon drums just 20 years ago and put on nuclear waste sites. Now the legal limit in your seafoods has been lifted to 1,200 CPMs, counts per minute. And so that's extraordinary because what that, that's an omission that there's an amazing amount of radiation already in your food and lawyers have went, oh shit, we got to change laws. And this was the nuclear lobbyists, right? These cowards, these traitors to humanity 
that knew it wasn't safe but manipulated politicians with suitcases of money to change the laws to allow them uh, to set up these nuclear facilities. No nuclear plant has ever been decommissioned, uh, period. And the closest they're going to be is in about 80 years, and they might get one. But look at Sellafield, there's 8 million liters a day hemorrhaging into that ocean. So, and then you got all the Iraqi war, the Afghanistan war, Somalia, uh, off the coastline where the Italian mafia had dumped incredible amounts of radioactive material and ships fill of it and just sank them, scuttled them. And that's why Somalia became so much pirates because they couldn't fish anymore. <coughs> Excuse me. And so we can no longer wait for media to pick up the slack or for the world community to come together and take notice. And we are determined to force uh, our hands now. Japan is gagging people in their own country, and so they're, they're no longer a democratic country, they're a tyrannical country. They can't control the flow going into the ocean, so they need to control the flow of information. Is the total most backward and betrayal we'll ever record in our history. We have a uh, very near, within two years, will be a dead Pacific, that the Philippines don't exist anymore, and that soon it should be... Um, showing up over here, unfortunately. But it'll show up everywhere on the Pacific Rim itself. The entire Pacific is lost. And we have 4,200 peer review academic studies every bloody day. And it's for cor a handful of politicians or corporations. And so we need to flip that into an open society. See, I got kicked off again that time. We have 4,200 peer-reviewed academic studies every day for a handful of corporations with human rights. And a corporate personhood is the reason you're getting away with all of that in the first place. It's because instead of having a charter, which is what a democratic country would do, uh, the amendment to the slavery law has allowed corporations certain human rights. And because of that, they hide their money in offshore accounts, but they also take that money from offshore accounts instead of paying taxes... And they use it to buy politicians and buy laws that ultimately supersede your laws. And that's how they're getting away with all of this. You can't hold them accountable. Google gets half a billion dollar fine. No one gets a criminal record. And they continue to do business in that country. You know, if Apple makes, uh, and they have, they get a big fine. If Bayer kills millions of people, they get a big fine. Right? So there's no incentive anymore for these corporations to not kill us. And they've proven that rep repeatedly. Go and look up company gets billion dollar fines and you'll get a whole list of the aspirin companies and the pharmaceutical and uh, agricultural and everything else. And we're being poisoned with uh, genetically modified foods in our supermarkets on purpose because what that does to you is it has no nutrients and it makes you so susceptible to the radiation that is coming at you and you can never escape it. And so you need to learn to give up the GMO and everything in the corner shops because that's all GMO and it has toxins engineered into it. And because uh, organic food has hundreds of thousands of times more energy because it has nutrients. <laughs> it's a pretty straightforward. I know I'm laughing a bit strange, but... They engineered all the potassium, magnesium, all the cobalt, all the carbon, all the calcium out of the corn. And so you need 448 corn on the cob to get the same amount of calcium as a single organic corn on the cob. So in other words, there's no nutrition. Can you eat 400 plus corn on the cob to get the same amount of calcium as a single organic? That's what I mean. And so I'm basically going to end up by saying dandelion gives you every nutrition you need to get you started. And then you can find other ways. And I have to finish that video that I want to do. Um, and our legacy is ultimately, even if they win this battle that we're into right now, is they don't get off this planet. They're forcing us off this planet. That's their game plan that this has happened now. And a lot of people who are and animals will survive this not a lot but a, a percentage and they'll be uh, better candidates to travel in the space because that's the only way we're going to get into space anyway if we can be susceptible to that 
And the cures are probably there for 4,200 peer review academic studies every single day that are locked away in the ivory tower that you paid for and that a handful of corporations get the copyrights to it. And so even the people that make these peer review studies, many, majority of the time, can never talk about them because they're for sale in the academic journals who got the copyrights for free and control the information. And so we need a total revolution of thinking change. Hang on, Zoe, I'm almost finished, honey. So we need a total revolution that we, we deal with this as a society. We come together and we forget about our bigotry and our racism and our hatred and our devoids and move on. And, and, and we engineer nutrition into the food. What a novel idea. Huh? What do you think about that one? Brilliant, right? We put nutrients in the food this time with GMO and we take the toxins out. I know, I know. You're like, Dana, man, you're brilliant. But I'm sure hundreds of thousands of people have said the same thing. But I think that would be a good start. That would be an act of uh, act of good faith. But we got to let a whole bunch of independent universities peer review whatever they're doing because they've lied to us for all these years. And that's a start, okay, that people have nutrients in their body. Even that would make me happy at this stage. If people had nutrients in their body, then they wouldn't be so susceptible to that radiation that's coming. By the way... We'll end it on this, and before I say hi and goodbye to everybody, is that look up DCA at your local health food stores. If you can't find it, go talk to your pharmacist and then go back to your health food store and get some. And a spoonful of that in your water, and there's links on my site. If you look up the cancer video on my site, the long ones, you'll find, the, you'll find uh, actually look up uh, Hello, D, uh, Cancer Cured in Canada Repeatedly by DCA. And that's the Sieve TV clip, and you can find the actual peer review study that way because they got everything right there in that video. Um, but it reduced all tumors by 70% in the first three weeks, right? If you don't learn nothing else, you don't do nothing else, that could very well save your life till the end of time, that little trick. Because that destroys the cancer's ability to grow into you, and it also rejuvenates your blood. It separates all the plating of your blood which is is a and by the way mountain water is another way to do that okay so i'll start winding down really fast because we're last night was an hour and 10 tonight is 56 minutes i'll say hi to people anybody want to say hi before our good boy we'll, we'll give her a night hi irene and all uh what do you guys think of all those crazies on the street in new york with the sign saying the end is near now well, we don't care about the 1% never allowing a revolution. We're taking it. We're taking it. We don't care about them. They're not in the game anymore. I don't even consider them. Geiger counters only pick up low-level radiation, okay? Uh, Liberty. And so the Geiger counter is only meant for the background radiation, like uh, the stuff that's innocuous. And... The, the, the particles we're talking about that are airborne aerosol and came across the ocean... In, up to, in less than three days and have polluted our entire northern hemisphere, not the entire thing. There are still pockets out there, and that's what I mean. If you look at the jet streams, the El Ninos, the El Ninos, the salinities of the ocean, how they mix it together, and they don't mix that well, but they do, it slows it down. You can pick out where you can go in your countries to live because you know the jet stream does certain things and that the El Ninos and El Ninos shift them slightly, but not a lot, and so you can make a judgment off that of where you're going to spend your future. But you have to learn to eat healthy and get away from everything GMO. Anything with a advertisement is probably not good for you. It's as simple as that. If it's got advertisement or it's in a corner shop, it's 99.5% of the times it's completely full of GMO. And 100% of the times it's got GMO in it. That's the sad, pathetic. And that has no nutrients. Plus, it, it works against your receptors in your body and it binds. And it really creates a lot of issues that I'm not going to go into right now. But I got a two-hour video. If you go back about 40 videos, I've done a two-hour video on GMO where I tried to include 400 headlines. And most of that was peer review stuff in order to say, hey, if you don't like that one, here's another 350 of why you shouldn't touch GMO. But I'll say hi. I'll say goodbye. Hi, Robin. You're welcome. Thank you for coming by. Thank you, Albert. Hi, Laurel. DCA is 78 bucks a bottle of 30 on Amazon. Be careful. Check things out a little further. 
Well, like you say, two weeks gets rid of your tumors by 70%. Pretty sweet deal, you ask me. Uh, but I've seen the big bottles where you just take it in a spoonful, dump it in. It's not that expensive. They're gouging you. But still, if you got lots of money, go for it. Uh, the 1% is going to die too, yes. And their children and their pets and everything else if we don't do something. Oh, you got the DCA Digenic? Good stuff. You got it at the pharmacy. I went to a couple of pharmacies here. They didn't have it, but the health food does. Hi, John. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Moya. Good night, all. Yeah. Thanks, Mickey. Camshaft. Yeah, DCA. You have to go back. Um, you'll have to go back, Sergeant. Uh, covered it a bit there. Hi, Nuts for Art. AVG. AVG in NAG 8. Hi. Annabeck. She said wave a hand. So, Elizabeth, hi. I'll say hi to everybody. Miss Milky, of course. New Brew Magic. Uh, you can find her links below. Very, very cool sites. Uh, just amazing amount of information. Well documented for a couple of years straight. Incredibly uh, valuable to any researchers that are popping by or shows up later. Rad Chick is below. Extraordinarily talented, gifted, educated. Her links are below. There's a video to a lecture uh, interview she done with Lauren. Moray, extraordinary souls, both of those. Uh, hi, Robert. Let me come down and catch a few more before we give it up. Laurel, Starlight, Carol, Euro prop, hey, bud. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm trying to catch a few names. Kutzer K, Stephen, Janet, Lunar, Infopower, Kiri B. Uh, checks and balances, checks and balances, uh, Miss Milky Clown again, can never say enough, high enough to you, and I guess I'll have to catch up on everybody after, once again, Nubro Magic's down below, go and check out his new tattoo video, that's pretty cool, uh, we'll see you folks tomorrow, I thought we had a pretty good one tonight. Holy smokes, we had 130 people in the stream. Didn't see that one. It was a good thing, though, because I stutter after 125. We'll see you folks tomorrow night. Uh, come back and be big and bad. Take care, folks.